Hello and welcome everybody. I'm Carrie Manders and welcome to our media briefing hosted by Grand Valley State University and BHSH System. We're here today to talk about the new BHSH Spectrum Health West Michigan Nurse Scholar Program. We will start this media briefing with opening remarks from Tina Fries Decker, President and CEO of BHSH System, formerly Spectrum Health and Beaumont Health. Then we will hear from Dr. Philomena Mantella, President of Grand Valley Grand State University. University. Matt Cox, BHSH System Chief Financial Officer and Sean Ulrich, Chief Nurse Executive of BHSH Spectrum Health West Michigan will be available for questions and Lola Koch, Acting Dean of GVSU's Kirkhoff College of Nursing, will also be available to answer questions. After the opening remarks, uh, we will take your questions, so please put them in the chat and we will call on you in the order that we see them. You are welcome to record this news conference and we will take as many questions as time allows this morning. Now I will turn it over to Tina Friesdecker. Tina. Thank you, Carrie. It is so wonderful to be here today with our partners and colleagues from Grand Valley State University to announce an innovative groundbreaking program for nursing education. Recording in progress. Let me set the stage with some facts. In healthcare nationwide is faced with a workforce shortage. We don't have enough nurses to care for the people in our state and that shortage has been exasperated by the burnout and stress caused by the pandemic and projections indicate a shortage of as many as 30,000 nurses in Michigan by 2030. And that number grows to half a million across the US. So this reality really requires us to think differently and boldly. We must challenge the status quo. So we started a conversation with GVSU about what we could do together to get more people in nursing school. We ideated all of the possibilities knowing we would need to make modifications to our current systems to achieve something innovative and workable. And we had three goals, to permanently increase access to education, to strengthen nursing education programs, and to invest in talented, compassionate people who truly want to become nurses. Because we collaborated and listened and invested in each other, we were able to find a solution and turn that solution into a reality. So we are so excited to announce a landmark program that we believe can serve as a model for other institutions nationwide facing nursing shortages. The BHSH Spectrum Health West Michigan Nurse Scholar Partnership will create an opportunity for up to 500 additional students to pursue a career in nursing over the next six years. BHSH is investing more than 19 million to provide infrastructure and startup costs and resources for increased clinical placements, training, and other support for students in this program. This includes grant dollars for all BHSH Spectrum Health West Michigan nurse scholars. We are addressing the financial barriers to college and smoothing the educational path to employment at BHSH Spectrum Health West Michigan. This partnership is a fantastic example of challenging the status quo and taking a bold step forward to meet a critical need in our communities, in our state, and potentially a model that can be replicated across the rest of the country by others. And it's just the beginning, as we will continue to explore novel approaches to meeting the healthcare needs of our region. So now I'd like to turn it over to my friend and partner, Dr. Mantella. Thank you, Tina. I couldn't be more proud to be here with my colleagues from BHSH System. And um, I want to thank them really from the beginning for pushing the question, working side by side on solutions, and most importantly, being driven by the values we share, which is around serving our community and serving the public good, which in this case is about our wellness and so critically important. You know, as I think about this opportunity, I have engaged in so many so many conversations over the last several months about serious talent gap shortages. And so many of them are confining our space to those that are in the pipeline or have the opportunity. What is truly unique here is the expansion of a pipeline, the opportunity extended to people who want to be nurses and who can we can provide the support the infrastructure, the placements, and um, the opportunities 
for them to see that vision become a reality. This moment is a moment of urgency in nursing and many other fields. And this moment requires, as Tina said, us to think differently, to think about new ways in which each of us lean into the current moment and be sure that we are fulfilling our mission. So I couldn't be more excited to be standing side by side. I'm very grateful to our colleagues who have worked every detail to make this happen. It is the opportunity that BHSH has given us the initial investment that enables us as a university not only to achieve those new levels of skilled nurses coming into and out of the field um, to serve in our communities, but also to continue that level of education, that level of nurses um, coming into our community year after year beyond the initial investment, because it gives us the ability to move scale up, support properly, to keep the level of excellence and the level of commitment to staying in Michigan and serving uh, the Michigan community, which has great needs coming out of this pandemic. So thank you, Tina and Matt and Sean and all of you who helped uh, make this come together. Lola, Laura on our team, just really grateful for all of your thinking and all of your great commitment. Well, thank you, Tina, and thank you, Dr. Mantella. Now let's take some questions um, from the media. So if you have any questions, please go ahead and post those in the chat, and we will go ahead and call on you to ask them uh, live to our panelists. I'll uh, kick us off this morning and uh, ask a question on, you know, how will this work for somebody who is wants to pursue nursing? What, what do they need to do? I don't know if there's someone specific that could answer or address that question. Sure, I can I can begin and then I can um, certainly invite our dean to to say more. Um, the interesting thing about uh, Grand Valley, first of all, we have a great program in nursing, uh, pass rates at 98% for undergraduates of their boards and 100% in the last graduate class. We have many people that want nursing education that we haven't been able to serve because of the resources uh, available to do so. So these students, first of all, can be accepted at a higher rate. A lot of well-qualified students who are ready to go in. Adult learners who are career changers, who've always dreamed of being a nurse but and have perhaps an undergraduate degree but need the nursing specific education can pivot in with a two-year program. So we'll have more of those students beginning. And then I am going to turn it over to our dean to talk about them coming through the pipeline and completing and joining um, BHSH. So, so thank you, President Mantella. Um, indeed, we have two pipelines. We have our traditional uh, students, and those are our students who are at GVSU uh, in their first two years, and they are in our pre-nursing uh, curriculum. They, you know, declare nursing as their major. And in our two admission time points for our traditional program, we take about two thirds of those students. And so we have capacity to increase and take more of those students. As President Mantella mentioned, we also then have those second degree students. Uh, they have an existing bachelor's degree. They come to us. There's many times prerequisites uh, as part of the pre-nursing that they would need to complete um, to make them ready. We have an admissions process. We use a holistic admissions process so that we can glean the best uh, pool of robust uh, nursing candidates. And then they come to us at um, admission, certain admission time points. We admit twice a year in our traditional program in our, for our fall semester and our winter, and we admit all three semesters in our, in our second degree, accelerated second degree program. So we admit spring, summer, uh, fall, and winter. As they complete the program uh, in the Nursing Health Scholars, we're really targeting uh, curricular changes that will offer the opportunity to really help onboard and streamline the students. And as they work in their clinical experiences at Spectrum Health, that we give them those unique opportunities so that then when they graduate, they'll be well positioned to join the Spectrum Health team. 
Thank, Thank you, you for that response. Let's go to Robin Erb, who has her hand up, and then we'll um, we'll go to Mark Sanchez in the chat. But first, Robin, if you want to go ahead and ask your question. Thanks for doing this. And I'm sorry, I'm feeling a bit tense right now. I'm not sure what this, and I put the question in the chat, what this actually looks like. Are we, are you talking about like new building, new structure, new school, or is this more offering scholarship and help to students who would come into your existing program? Mm -hmm. So let me um, give you, see if I can give you an overview of it. Um, we are not confined by our physical facilities. So we have built out an infrastructure, in fact, have uh, one, the largest simulation center in the state that was just opened um, this past fall. So facilities are adequate. What constrains the size of nursing is the model has a very specific formula of faculty uh, to student ratio. Um, and the number of clinicals available to support those students. So this infrastructure dollars expands our faculty, expands our simulation center hours, and it expands our clinicals working in partnership with Sean and, and BHSH system uh, in order to be sure these students can get the adequate placements. That's part of the resources. The other part of the resources go directly to the students so they can, career changers can afford to make that change. Reducing the cost of education, $10,000 per year in a grant for two years of nursing, $10,000 each year. Um, and so uh, those are the, the components of the investment. We're fortunate to not need a facilities infusion in order to expand our program. Great. Thank you for that question, Robin. Did you have a, any follow-up? I do. Actually, it's a different topic, and I think somebody else offered this question, too, about the data. Um, when I look at the BLS data, it looks like we have more nurses than we did 10 years ago, five years ago. Can you help me understand more about how this would be and where this shortage comes from? The data I'm looking at, maybe I'm looking at wrong, uh, incorrectly, doesn't seem to bear that out. So I can take that one. Um, so certainly we have right now in this country a shortage of nurses. So um, uh, despite what previous um, amount of nurses there have been in the country, we know that there's a shortage across the country of about 250,000 um, nurses, I think between 200 and 250,000 short. In this state, we also have a shortage of nurses because of the pandemic, because of retirements that we saw during the pandemic, because of we, what we anticipate even greater retirements, the need is expected to grow even more. Um, some of the most recent statistics suggest that by the year 2030, we'll need an additional 3 million nurses. Now that's a lot of nurses um, in, in this country, um, but that's what the projections are saying. You can look at the aging demographics of, of society, the, the seriousness of delayed care that we had during the pandemic and what that's gonna look like over the next several years as well. So we see in nursing a growing need moving forward. Thank you, Sean, for that Again. answer. Mark Sanchez, I don't know if that if your question was answered um, right there, but I'll I'll give it to you if you have another question you would like to ask. Uh, no, I'm just curious. The, that thirty thousand in Michigan, half million across the state. Where where did that data come from? Is that BLS data or or somebody else's estimate? The um, it's BLS data in terms of the okay. national um, numbers. Okay. Yep. Where's the where's the estimate for the state come from? You know, I'm, I, I don't have that right at my fingertips, Mark. I could certainly get that. Okay. I'm curious, during the pandemic, and we've heard so much about the burnout and the turnover, what, what Spectrum Health's uh, nursing tuner turnover rate today versus pre-pandemic? Yeah, so... Um, um, what you're suggesting uh, certainly is something that we've seen here and nationally we've seen this as well, that the turnover for nursing has gone up for a whole variety of reasons. So pre-pandemic versus now, we are up in terms of our turnover overall. Um, it's a number that isn't surprising when I talk to colleagues across the country. It's similar. Um, we see lots more opportunity for nurses, um, especially with travel nursing possibilities uh, um, across the country. So it's, it's not unexpected. It's just a hard reality that we're facing yeah. right now. So the numbers have gone up. 
Can you put a specific number on what it is today versus more than two years ago? Five percent, ten percent annually? No, no, it hasn't gone up that much. It's probably around three to four percent. Okay. So the scholar scholarships, uh, ten thousand dollars each year over then each of two years. What's the cost of a nursing degree at Grand Valley today? So I can I can take that one. So tuition is around uh, tuition for our junior and senior year uh, is around fifteen thousand per year. So thirty thousand uh, dollars per student. Uh, that would be the cost of the junior and senior. We we admit at that point, um, and that doesn't include, of course, the first two years, which would be a similar dollar amount uh, for their pre nursing. So it's around fifteen thousand per year, and that doesn't include, um, you know, any, um, you know, additional fees uh, that um, we have in our junior and senior year. We also have some simulation lab costs as well. So I think in round numbers, this would be for RNs. Yes, these are bachelor's, uh, BSN uh, degree. Okay. What's the what's the current enrollment at the Kirkhoff College? We, we admit 80 students per admission cycle in our traditional program, so 160 per year, and we admit 24 in each of our admission cycle in our accelerated second degree program, so that's 72 students, and then uh, that, of course, is every year. Okay, so 500 over six years, that's, that's a significant increase in your capacity. Right, so with, with, the, with the support of our, our um, Spectrum Health Partners, we're able to increase by 104, our capacity by 104. Uh, and someone asked that about admission, uh, admission. So we're going to admit 24 additional second degree students and 16 additional traditional students in each of our admission cycles as part of this partnership. Um, and we admit, uh, I already mentioned the admission cycles, which I think was another question. When are we taking applications? Uh, we have admissions uh, deadlines uh, that are posted on our website for different uh, in, you know, start dates for our students. Okay. Is there, is there any re requirement that students who receive a scholarship uh, go to work at Spectrum Health? Do they have to put a year or two at Spectrum or, or is the yeah. field wide open for them? Yes, we do have we do have uh, that in play. I'll let Sean take that question. Yes, yes, we, there will be um, an expectation that the students come and work at Spectrum Health. We're working through the details of that right now. What that will look like moving forward, but yes. Okay. Final question: Is this for Spectrum Health? Is it the, the statewide system now, or Spectrum Health in West Michigan? This is for Spectrum Health West Michigan right okay. now. Thank you. Thank you, Mark. Let's go to Brian McVicker. Hey, um, a little bit of this was touched on, but um, could you just kind of walk me through a little bit more detailed look at how the $19 million to launch the program, what that will be spent on, please? I can start. Um, about half of it's direct to student aid with a work commitment for um, for $10,000, a one-year commitment for $20,000, which we anticipate that was what each nurse would get, $10,000 each year, a two-year commitment. Um, the commitment will be supported uh, by the university in terms of uh, should they, for any reason, um, not feel it's a right fit for them, then that grant will turn into a zero interest loan backed by the university. So the grant support is from a BSH, BHSH Spectrum and uh, the university will back the, the funding to be sure, you know, students and employee and Spectrum are making the right decisions for them ultimately. Um, and so that it won't do harm uh, to students and the student support. So that's the student support for, side and that's about 50% of the funding, the other 50% is going to faculty costs for those first, uh, the, for this five year period that will be ramping up to those new levels, as well as uh, simulation infrastructure, and really some um, support to be sure that the students feel a part of a cohort, feel linked very early on with our partners. 
Um, so some personnel that's relating to staff support. So faculty, staff uh, to expand our, um, our ability to support the larger cohort of students. Does that include adding um, like more faculty and staff? And if so, do you have a, a number on that? I do not have a number on that specifically, but the answer to your question is yes. It's probably two or three staff people. Um, and then um, Lola, I don't know if you have a round number in terms of faculty costs that, or faculty numbers. Right, so, so we have th uh, three levels of faculty uh, that we uh, utilize to uh, operationalize the curriculum. So we have tenure, tenure track faculty. So we will be hiring um, three tenure, tenure track faculty, three affiliate faculty, which uh, spend a tremendous amount of their educational time in our simulation center, and then adjunct faculty, which serve as our clinical instructors. Uh, at the bedside uh, uh, in direct patient care with the, with the students in the medical center. Um, and so we'll also be hiring uh, 10 adjunct faculty uh, for uh, clinical placements. Thank you. Thank you, Brian. I think we have one uh, final question from Robin. I don't know if you had an additional question on what was in your chat. You it might have already been answered, but I'll give so, it back to you. I feel like I'm rat a tat tat in the chat here with questions. I appreciate this. I just want to make sure I understand the model correctly then. So the students, your spectrum will pay the students for their clinical work. And that, how, how does that work in terms of like, you know, the, the money goes directly to the school and the student gets only a bill for, you know, what's left. How, how does that work? And then the second part of that, is this modeled after something else? Is this, you know, is this a plan that you're seeing at another school and hospital or is this what normally is done? Uh, I, I think it's really a, a new model, as Tina said, it's really breaking some new ground uh, in terms of making investment in the infrastructure necessary to increase size, increase the pipeline. So I think that's really important to, to recognize. The way in which it would work is students that are coming into pre-nursing get selected to come into nursing, will be told and shared that there is this opportunity to be considered a Spectrum West Michigan scholar and that the commitment for an additional $10,000 of grant aid will be the two years um, for 10,000 each year for two years will be the two year commitment and that they will be able to experience Spectrum through the um, clinical side as they get into that part portion of the education and will lay out um, the requirements around the aid that they will be offered. So they will have a certain level of aid that they come when they come to Grand Valley State University that we support their education and it will be enhanced as they come into the nursing portion of their education by $10,000 a year in exchange for that commitment with sort of full transparency up front in terms of, um, you know, the student understanding their commitments and being excited about them. I have to say that, you know, we're talking about a premier employer in our state. And so we will have students that will want to rush to this opportunity. We're literally, literally physically proximate. And so people, we know each other well, we have partnered deeply on many other things. And so I think what we're gonna have is a lot of our pre-nursing students who will want to be selected and competing for these slots because their intention would be to work uh, as their desired employer there. For adults that are, are career changers, I think it's similar. Many of those adults are situated in our community. They're here, they're raising their children here. They'd love to go into nursing, but they have commitments that keep them here. So again, I think that this will be viewed as a premier opportunity and um, one that they hope to be selected for. And we're just, we're, you know, I just can't tell you how thrilled we are to be partnering and offering, and it is new. Uh, and it is the kind of thing that we're going to need to be doing if we're gonna address the talent gaps urgently today, whether it's in nursing or tech or um, artificial intelligence, whatever the areas are. I really wanna thank our teams because they were extremely creative in coming up with something that is innovative, that is workable, that can solve the solution and not just do something that we've traditionally done, but really solve the solution to get more people into nursing and through through the entire program. And so this is um, 
like I said, kind of a landmark opportunity um, program for us because it does change the conversation about where we're going. And I'm really pleased with our team at uh, BHSH, Spectrum Health, uh, West Michigan, and GBSU for coming together and you know being okay with not doing things the way we've always done them and coming up with these new strategies. And if I could add to that, I think the other thing that makes this a little unique is that these are two local organizations, large local organizations coming together to support our community. And while there's certainly across the country, lots of different things that um, health care organizations are looking at in terms of, of nursing, this is local. This is very local and it's an ability for us to take care of our community. That's what excites me about this program. Well, thank you all for those responses. I know there was one last question. I don't know, Sean, if you want to address it about what we're doing, what Spectrum Health is doing to retain nurses. If you want to answer that, then we can um, go to closing remarks from Tina and Dr. Mantella. Yeah, you know, the, the, the retention of our nurses is one of our highest priorities, quite honestly. And so we're looking at a number of things. It's just not one particular thing that we can do. It's a number. And so one of the things we have to look at is the health and well-being of our nurses, first and foremost. You know, so what kind of programs can we offer to our nurses? Flexibility of work schedule is also very important to our nurses. So how do we um, continue to offer um, those type of opportunities? opportunities as we go forward. And certainly just staying competitive in the market is really important as well. So there's lots and lots of things that we could probably have another 30 minutes and we wouldn't get through those. But please know that our investment, not only in developing our nurses for the future, but also retaining our nurses here in the future is very important to us. Our nurses that are in this organization will serve as those preceptors and mentors for those nurses coming into our community. Well, thank you for all those questions. I'll turn it over to Tina and then Dr. Mantella for your closing remarks. Well, we are grateful for everyone that has worked on this program. We're grateful for all of our nurses and for the students coming in to really care for our community. We look forward to partnering with GBSU on this innovative approach, and we're really eager to see the impact that this Nurse Scholar Program will make in healthcare and in our community. We hope it will be the first of many new bold steps in fueling education for our much needed health science positions. I'll turn it over to Dr. Mantella. Thanks again, Tina. And um, I echoed all Tina's sentiments, particularly thank, thank you to those on the, on the call who've made this happen. I wanna make my closing uh, comments to two people, to two parties, first students. Students, you have a new opportunity here to come and really, um, fulfill your dreams to be a nurse and to um, work at at that goal at two premier organizations. And I hope this will inspire you. And second to our enterprises, um, let's work together on pathways like this that create more inclusive opportunities uh, for our citizens to realize their dream and so that we can fulfill our needs. So thank you to everyone. Well, thank you for joining this media briefing. I uh, appreciate all the panelists and your answers. If you have additional questions, if the media have additional questions, please reach out to the media relations teams at both Grand Valley State University and BHSH System. Have a great afternoon, everyone.